Hello, and welcome to the Growing Our Family podcast, Pregnancy Edition, where we'll discuss topics ranging from your very first positive test all the way through delivery. I'm your host, Brittany, and I'm a new mom to a beautiful baby boy. Throughout my pregnancy, I did hours of research on everything that came my way. Join me on a weekly chat where I'll share my knowledge and personal experiences with all of you. You are listening to episode 15, Introducing Dog to Baby. So this is actually a two-part podcast. Today, we will be talking all about introducing your newborn to your family dog. And then last Thursday, we covered how to introduce your child to any dog on our parenting podcast. And that includes um, a dog that you might be bringing home to join the family or a random dog that you might meet out on the street like during a walk. And that's more focused on like um, children, either starting from, you know, a few months old all the way up to your toddlers versus today we're really just covering how to introduce and how that first interaction is going to go between your newborn when you bring them home from the hospital and your dog that is at home. So introducing your baby to a dog can be difficult at times, whether that is bringing your newborn home to the hospital or introducing your child to a new dog at any time. Not only do you have to keep your child safe, but you also want to make sure it's a positive experience for both parties. If all goes well, your baby will hopefully love their dog and your dog will love your baby in return. It can be so stressful bringing your newborn home for the first time and not even just for you. Your furry little children have probably been acting a little off leading up to this big day and that's because they're feeding off of your energy. Here are some tips and our experience with introducing our baby to our pups. So first off, I kind of want to give you guys um, just a backstory on our family dynamic. Um, We have two dogs, Shadow and Nova, and Shadow is our eight-year-old rescue, and he's a lab border collie mix, and he is such a great dog now after years and years of training, showing him the love he deserves and honestly a lot of hard work. The poor guy was abused in his last home and found himself at the pound. My husband and I adopted him five and a half years ago when we were still newly dating. I, um, we moved into our apartment, which allowed dogs. It was the first place that we had lived that even allowed pets in general. And I had found shadow at the pound. We went to just go look at the dogs about a week before moving And I saw him and instantly fell in love with him. I called the pound every single day for a week because they wouldn't let us like reserve like any dogs. Like you can't um, put even like I offered to like pay for him in advance and then pay for whatever it costs to board him for the entire week. And they still wouldn't let me do it. So the day we moved into our apartment, we drove over, dropped our first load off at the apartment, went to the pound and picked him up and I tell you, it was just, I've never like loved a dog more than this dog because he just had such a rough start to his life and he just deserves all the attention and love in the world. He was the dog we were worried about when we brought our son home because he just has some weird quirks. He hates scooters and strollers and bikes, pretty much anything with wheels. And he also hates men, men in hats, smokers, and really anybody that seems threatening, which isn't really a downside in my opinion. I really like that aspect of him. He's fought off a few like sketchier looking people that um, came up to me on walks. But the problem with having a dog that hates so many things is you never know what new thing could set them off. 99% of the time, he is the world's greatest dog, but it took us some time to make sure he never fell into the 1% while he was around the baby. Nova, our little baby, is the complete opposite. She is our lab German Shepherd mixed puppy, and she was almost exactly a year old when our son was born, and she loves anything and anyone. She's so gentle and loving and incredibly calm, especially for a puppy. I've never met a puppy that just like, doesn't, I mean, she's not hyper. She just wants to lay around the house and like cuddle with you and just would do anything for you. We got her as a little baby. She was only, um, eight weeks old when we picked her up. And I just, 
she was not the one we were worried about. She is not hyper. There's no, like, the worst thing about her is she has that, like, typical lab tail. So everything in its path just kind of gets destroyed. So we're just more worried about her getting too excited and, like, accidentally hitting the baby while she was wagging her tail. Um, so during the pregnancy, there are a few things you can do before baby arrives to help with the transition. First, you want to start making gradual changes to your dog's routine. If you know you won't be able to take your dog for a walk every morning at 7 a.m., try shifting that routine beforehand so they don't associate this change with your newborn. The same goes for other things like feeding schedules or even where they get to sleep at night. If they sleep on your bed every night and you know once the baby's here, they're not going to be able to sleep on your bed, you want to make sure that you change that and teach them not to before the baby comes. A lot of people want to give their pups extra amounts of cuddles before the baby gets here and like just like spoil them a little bit before they kind of put them on the back burners for just a month while they get used to this new life. But this can actually be a negative thing. You don't want your baby to get your, sorry, your puppy to get used to these extra cuddles just for them to abruptly stop once your newborn arrives. Instead, slowly decrease the amount of playtime you give them. And this doesn't mean don't love your pups. You can still continue to love and cuddle them. Just limit the amount of time you go to the dog park or you take them on an evening walk. Change that to like, you know, not every single day you take them on an evening walk. Just like, maybe like every other day to start off with. You definitely do not want to take your newborn to the dog park in the beginning. So if you just like think about those things, you want to try to adjust to that lifestyle um, beforehand. And once your baby's a little bit older, then you might be totally fine with taking them to the dog park. And that's totally fine. And you can go back to spoiling your pup as much as you want. But Just don't try to overextend yourself in the beginning because trying to get used to this new life is hard enough as is. You also want to work on additional training with your dog. Master a few necessary commands like go to your spot, sit, stay, and gentle. These will come in handy once the baby is here and you are trying to give commands. You'll also want to try to eliminate jumping up when you walk in through the door. Hopefully you've already started to work on this with your pregnant belly. You know, that's just not a great thing if your dog likes to jump. Um, But if not, you definitely want to get them to not jump after the baby gets here. Before the baby, this like jumping up when you walk in can be really cute and just a sign of affection. You know, they walk in and you might like pat your legs and be like, oh, come here, sweetie. And like you give them lots of loves and pets. But when you're trying to like hold your newborn, that's just like not a good idea. And I know it might be hard and it might be, I had a really hard time like saying like, oh, like my dogs, I'm never like, you know, I would never do that. Like I love my dogs. I want that. And as soon as your baby gets here, it's like a switch flips in your brain and you just become like this mama bear. And it's like, I love my dogs. I love them to death. But man, my baby, I I would do anything for him. So um, you also want to get them used to baby items, smells, and sounds. You can play recordings of crying and laughing so they're familiar with those sounds. And you'll also want to make sure they're comfortable around strollers and wheels and any other like baby items so they don't try to attack it on your first outing. For smells, let them roam around the baby room, sniff everything, and in- introduce them to smells of like lotions you might use or, um, you know, like diaper cream, anything that you think that you might be using on your baby a lot. Let them get familiar with that and like all the baby clothes after you wash them with any specific detergent if you use draft, just so they become familiar with all these different things. So the only new variable is the baby itself. That way, like, they already know what the the clothes smell like. They already know what all these lotions that are going to go on the baby smells like. And it's just not so many new things all at one time. So when the time comes for the first encounter, um, you'll want to have a family member go in first to greet the dogs. Give them attention, but don't rile them up. You'll want to get some of their initial excitement out before you bring the baby in. Once they start to calm down a bit, introduce something of babies. We had a swaddle blanket and a hat, 
and because we have two dogs so i just let the dog sniff the blanket and the hat while i talked calmly and just gave them lots of attention so we could associate good feelings with this smell after they started to get distracted from the blanket i knew that like they had kind of like smelled it enough and they're like okay yeah we know what that smells like so we decided it was time to bring in the baby We kept the baby in the carrier and up out of reach when we first walked in. I had my husband hold the baby while my parents and I kept a hold of the dogs. We set the baby down in the carrier still on the couch so the dogs could sniff the carrier while still on leash. We didn't let them get close to the baby though just because they were so excited and you just never know. Even our sweet baby girl like Nova, we just, who knows how they're going to react and sometimes you just can't react fast enough. So I really just wanted to make sure that they were familiar with all the smells before we even let them get close to the baby's skin. It's really important to watch the signs that your dog gives off. And I'll go over those more a little bit later in the episode, um, just what to look for and like what these signs kind of mean. After a few days, you can let the dog sniff the baby in a closer proximity while still on leash. Make sure to have assistance holding the dogs and the baby so everyone is really controlled. If you give your baby, sorry, your puppy, sorry, I call my dogs my babies, so this is why I keep saying baby instead of puppy um, or dog, just because that's how I refer to them in my real life. But um, if you give your dog lots of love and pets while they sniff your child, it is... um, it just like helps them associate that smell with really like positive feelings. It's important to allow your dog to approach you and your baby instead of forcing the baby on them. Some dogs can be fearful of the unknown and if they've never met a baby before, they could like be really skittish of them and you don't want to associate the baby with that sense of fear. Once your pup gets used to the baby while on leash, you can try an off-leash experience. Just make sure you stay between the dog and your baby so you can intervene if needed. Babies can flail their arms, cry, or scream suddenly, and this can really scare your pup. So it's best to keep both dog and baby in a controlled environment with lots of help at the beginning so you can intervene if necessary. Most dogs just adjust very quickly and might even become protective of the baby. So don't worry if they like seem a little afraid at first. Nova is our big scaredy cat, the like the puppy. And she was actually kind of afraid of the baby at first. And like every time like we would uh, have the two of them like nearby and he would like reach out for her, she would like kind of run away. And so we just like played it really slow and just made sure that There was lots of positive reinforcement and now she'll like come right up to him and like lay down next to him and put her head near him so he can like pull on her ears and stuff. It's really cute, but just like be, um, patient. And if you follow all the steps, your dog and baby will grow up to have mutual respect for one another. Always remember to never leave the baby unattended with the dog though. You really never know if, like, if the baby, like, does something funky or scares the dog or if something else triggers the dog, like, maybe a sound outside or if they hear a cat. Like, you just, your child is so important and so are your dogs and it would be such a tragedy if anything ever happened. So, it's just not worth it, honestly. And even if they're not trying to be vicious, sometimes, you know, like, the doorbell rings and my dogs, like, make a mad dash to the door And if the baby is in their path, they might accidentally step on them or anything. So it just always be there when your dog and baby are in the same room. It just, that's like one thing that I've taken very seriously. And even though my dogs love my son, I would definitely wait until he's older and is able uh, to like kind of protect himself if they were to like run by him and like knock him over or anything. So Um, That is one thing that I would definitely recommend. So now I'm going to go over some of the signs to watch out for with your dog. Um, Just things to check for and just read their social cues so you kind of know how they're feeling. First and foremost is their tails. This is the most obvious emotion a dog can portray is a happy wagging tail. That's like everyone knows that sign. 
if the dog is like has their tongue out and their tail's going, they are a happy pup. And they're probably totally okay with you walking up to them and just giving them some love. For the most part, a wagging tail means a happy pup, but it's important to look at the other signs to see if the wagging tail might be a sign of any other emotion. A fast wag is a pretty good sign that your dog is happy, but a slow wag can indicate nervousness. And just because the tail is wagging doesn't always mean that they're super happy and friendly. And then the other obvious one is if they tuck their tail between their legs, you know they're anxious or scared. And this can easily escalate to aggression if you don't tread carefully. A dog that feels like they're backed into a corner can start to lash out because they don't feel like they have any other option. And kids just don't really understand this. They're not very good at reading social cues, let alone social cues from a dog. The next thing to look out for is ears. The position of your dog's ears is another great indicator of their mood. If it's easier to read, it is easier to read the signs of your dog if they have pointy ears like a German Shepherd, but you can also see signs of a floppy-eared dog if you pay close attention to more of like the base of their ear, what it's doing. If their ears are pulled back and their tail is wagging, this is a good sign that they are in a good mood. They are typically like happy and wanting to cuddle and just like really into affection at that time. But if their ears are flat and straight back or to the side, this can be a sign of fear. And it can also be a sign that they are preparing to attack. So not good. Um, And if their ears are pointed upwards, they're most likely just trying to listen in on something or someone. And these are just general like guidelines for most dogs. Obviously, you're going to know your dog better than other dogs. And if you just like pay attention to what they're doing and like how they're acting, you'll have a better idea than like trying to like see which way their ears are pointing. But you kind of know like if you think of times like when your dog's scared or when your dog's happy or excited and just like think about what they look like and what their like tails and ears and fur is doing, then um, you'll have a good idea of how they're feeling in that moment. And then the last one is their fur. The one that most people recognize right away is the raised hackles or like the hair on their neck and back. And this can be seen as a sign of aggression in most cases. But it also can signal fear, anxiety, excitement, nervousness, or it might even stand up when they're angry. Dogs can't control this. It happens naturally, like when we get goosebumps. But in any case, if you see this, it's probably a good idea to give your dog some space and just leave them alone to like calm down and get over whatever feelings they might be feeling. So um, these are some of just the brief ones that... Uh, pretty common. If you want to read more on your dog's body language, you can check out a really comprehensive article that I found on Pet Cube, and I'll link to that in the show notes if you want to just check it out and read up a little bit more on dog social cues. So um, that's it for this week's um, episode on introducing your child to new dogs. Again, if you want to tune in on Monday, I'll be talking all about, um, how to introduce your newborn to your dog at home, uh, when you first bring them home from the hospital. Um, so that's it for that. This week I will be doing a product review and it doesn't really have anything to do with introducing your baby to a dog, but I have had a ton of parents talk about, Um, trimming nails and just not wanting to do it and asking like what other parents use. I've seen like three different ones on um, Twitter. I've had a parent ask me in real life what I use to trim my baby's nails and then another one on one of the mom forms that I'm on. So it seems to be like a really common problem and I just wanted to share this amazing product that I have found I've been using it for probably like four months now, and it's called the Fancidi Baby Nail Trimmer. It's F-A-N-S-I-D-I, and um, it's just, it's amazing. I, too, have experienced the anxiety that comes along with using those sharp baby nail clippers on your infant's sensitive fingers. 
I just like I don't know how you do it. I can't I can't handle it. It it just stresses me out. I worry about like cutting his finger open and making him bleed everywhere. And that just like stresses me out more than anything. So this nail trimmer, it's like a electric nail file more like and it is one of the greatest purchases I have made. The nail trimmer comes with six different grinding tips. And this, um, each one of the six is for each stage of your child's life. The finest one is suitable for newborns and the most coarse, the most coarse one, uh, is so durable that it can be used even on adults. The instructions include a chart to tell you exactly which tip to use based off of your child's age. Like for example, um, they come in multiple different colors. The pink tipped one is for newborns up to, I think it's like three months of age. And you just kind of move up in coarseness as your baby gets older and their nails get a little bit um, thicker. The file machine comes with multiple different settings to customize your experience. The button on the front allows you to switch between left and right hands. And this is just the rotation of the file, whether it spins clockwise or counterclockwise. And it also has a low and a high speed for each direction. It has an automatic light that turns on during use, which is perfect for seeing your child's nails in the dark, or um, if it's just not very well lit in your room, you don't have to like turn on all the bright lights if they're sleeping, which is a great time to cut their nails while they're not moving around. Um, It just is really easy to see everything. It only takes two AA batteries to use, Um, so... I bring it with me when we travel instead of the nail clippers, and I always have batteries with me for all of his things, you know, his uh, sound machine and his um, uh, his baby monitor, all of, all of the things that take batteries. I bring a pack of batteries with me everywhere, so it's really easy. I've only had the batteries run out on me once so far, and uh, I don't use it like every day, but I feel like I use it fairly often, and so I think the batteries last... A decent amount of time for how much energy I think it would take to like run this little thing. My favorite thing about this device is the stress free manicures. I would always stress out when it was time to trim my son's nails because I was so worried about just cutting his skin or if I tried to regular file, um, he just wouldn't sit still enough to do that and they kind of came out funky looking, a little crooked and really sharp on the corners. And some moms even bite off their kids' nails, but I can never get a nice cut, and they would always just end up ripping off, which I felt like would hurt. So I don't really like the alternative options. This file is so quiet and so gentle. Even if you hit their skin on accident, the file does not cut them. It just stops rotating if it hits anything besides their nail. I tried it on myself a few times beforehand, And literally the second it hits my skin, it just stops rotating. I don't know how it does it, but it does, and it's amazing. I've recommended this product to multiple other moms so far, and every single one who's purchased it has loved this product. They've come back to me and be like, oh my gosh, this is like the greatest thing. Thank you so much for recommending it. So I am not the only one who loves it. It has great ratings. Um, It's right now on sale on Amazon. I, um, at the time of this podcast, it's only $16.99, but you know, that might change by the time you listen to it. Um, so I mean, that's $17 I think I've ever spent. I think I also got it on sale. I've found the best time to cut my son's nails is while he's eating or sleeping. The device is so easy to use. I can do it while breastfeeding without any hassle. And it's so great because he's just like preoccupied with something else. I just like trim him on the one hand and then I switch him sides and then trim the other hand and he's done. The only con I do have for this product is it does take a few tries to get used to it. I didn't really understand the left right buttons and thought that was like which hand I was holding it in. Because I did it when I I still had a pretty newborn and mom brain is a real thing. And obviously that doesn't really make that much sense. But um, I have noticed that using the right hand settings on baby's left hand has resulted in a slightly jagged filing job. Um, And I do it while facing his hand. So like 
his the right setting on his right hand when I'm looking at his right hand like he's facing me but it might change like if you were to hold his hand in the same direction your hand is I if that makes sense so you might have to play with it a little bit to get like the settings right and just figure out what words works best for you um but after a few tries I was able to get it to work so smoothly and I just really feel like this is a small con compared to all of like the great pros that this product has. Um, it is definitely worth the price. You can get it in pink or blue on Amazon. Uh, they have two different colors of blue, two different colors of pink. I don't really know what the second ones are. I think it's just maybe all blue instead of white and blue. I, I don't really understand the difference between them, but, um, I have like the white and blue one and it just works perfectly. I love this thing. I will forever recommend it to every mom I ever meet. So you can check it out on Amazon. I uh, will link to it in my show notes if you want to check it out. And it is definitely a great product. It's really great, especially for baby showers because some moms like don't even know that they need it. Um, they probably registered for some baby nail files or baby clippers, but if you show up with this thing, they'll be like, "Ugh, I don't need this. And then they'll go through like three times of clipping their kids' nails and pull it out and be like, you are a lifesaver. It is the perfect product to add to your registry and I guarantee you will love it. So, um, that is it this week on Growing Our Family Pregnancy Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, growingourfamily.com. That's growing o u r family dot com to see today's show notes and product links. Also, don't forget to rate and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you download your podcast, so you always get the latest episodes. If you love the show, the easiest way to support us is to actually go and just give us a quick rating, hopefully five stars, on any of the different podcasting sites that you may listen to, like iTunes or Stitcher. Um, I think we're on, um, tune in, uh, on SoundCloud or, uh, even like Spotify. So if you guys could just go and give us a really quick rating, it really helps the podcast become more visible to other listeners and, um, it just helps like get us up there. I know on iTunes, I don't even think the podcast shows up. Um, very high up on like the searching if you just search for pregnancy podcast. So any ratings really help whether it's just like a quick rating, hopefully, again, uh, if you rate, hopefully you love it and you'll give us five stars. If not, like send us an email, let us know how we can improve it. I'm totally open to like suggestions and questions and everything. I love listening to my readers and like just getting to know you guys. Um, and then if you have an extra minute, if you could just write a quick review, I can't even tell you guys how much I would appreciate that. And I'm planning on doing a quick shout out coming up on one of these upcoming episodes. So if you give us a rating, I will, um, read it on the show and like give you guys a shout out because I love my listeners and I just, you guys are amazing. So anyway, um, that is is it. Again, check out the show notes. Um, send me an email. Follow me on Twitter at growing the letter R family to join in on some of the future conversations. But that is it for this episode. If you've had your baby or just want to learn more about life after delivery, check out the growing R family pregnant parenting edition. Sorry, you're listening to the pregnancy edition. Um, and please join me next week for another episode.